Welcome to the Nonprofit Show. We are so glad you're here. And if you joined us for our green room chatter, you were privy to the technology uh, challenges that we've been experiencing. Nonetheless, no fear, we figured it out. And today we are excited because we have another esteemed guest from your part-time controller joining us today, Carol Melvin. And Carol joins as a regional director at YPTC. She's here to talk to us about why outsourcing makes sense for your nonprofit. So really excited, Carol, to learn from you. And again, for those of you that might have joined us in the green room chatter, you heard me mention that your colleague, Geraldine Dressler, had joined us previously on an episode talking about the lack of professional accountants and bookkeepers and finance um, you know, experts. So I'm really excited for this. But before we dive deep with you, Carol, we want to remind our viewers and our listeners who we are if we haven't had the pleasure of meeting you yet. So Julia Patrick is here, of course. Julia is the CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. And we have you, my friend, to thank for this amazing platform where I get to serve alongside as the co-host day in and day out. I'm Jarrett Ransom, also known as Nonprofit Nerd and CEO of The Raven Group. We are truly honored alongside with YPTC to have other amazing presenting sponsors that allow us these opportunities. So thank you to Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Fundraising Academy at National University, Nonprofit Thought Leader, your part-time controller, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Nerd, as well as Nonprofit Tech Talk. Truly many of these companies, if not all of them, have been with us from the very beginning as we march towards 1,000 episodes. If you've joined us before, you know, we kept touting 900. Well, we've passed 900 and you can find all of these episodes on our archive platforms. So go ahead and pull out that uh, smartphone. I know you're either on it right now or it's right next to you. You can download the app. You can also still find us on podcast and streaming broadcast platforms. And just uh, later this afternoon, you will have today's episode uploaded on these platforms. So Carol, now is when we turn the tables. I want to reintroduce uh, you to all of our viewers and listeners around the globe. So again, today, thrilled to have Carol Melvin with us from your part-time controller. Welcome to you. Thank you so much, Jarrett and Julia. So so pleased to join that esteemed group of, of fellow YPTCers um, and all the amazing guests you've had over the last last four years. It's really, you know, thank you for for this platform. It's a great resource. Well, thanks. You know, it's so funny because just in in a little bit more than three years, and we're moving in towards our fourth year, the dialogue and the things that we talk about. Jared, don't you agree they've changed so much? I mean, we still talk about like, you know, accounting and finance, but now we're having this conversation about a new way to think about how we even work with these providers. And so let's dig into it first and let's start with what is outsourcing and how does it work? Because this is not just an accounting finance thing. We this, we're seeing this with HR, we're seeing this with programming marketing so give us that that overall view if you will yeah yeah I, and i love that opening julia because um i hope that people do look at outsourcing as a new way they might have the you know some there's some myths about uh, outsourcing that i hope to bust today but really talk about there's there's lots of ways that you can look at outsourcing so outsourcing of course, is a business practice where an organization contracts out certain functions to an external service provider rather than handling them in-house. And this is done to, to leverage specialized services, um, often to reduce costs, improve efficiency, and to really focus on the core business activities, which for our nonprofits are programming and fundraising. Mm -hmm. um, and, and how it works is, is really, you know, first a nonprofit has to identify the need. Um, and, you know, for many of our clients, um, you know, they, they, they need a CFO, a controller, an accountant or bookkeeper, but it might not be on a full-time basis. Um, right. so, so for some nonprofits, having a permanent part-time solution uh, for their finance and accounting makes sense. And, and this is where, you know, this dovetails with, um, 
what Geraldine Dressler was talking about on your show um, not that long ago about there is, you know, an, sometimes an inability to attract really qualified staff, mm -hmm. um, especially to perform some of those intermediate or advanced um, accounting. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, so those are some cases where you might think about sourcing, you know, in that you know, sort of permanent part-time way. But there's lots of other ways that outsourcing um, can address some of the financial challenges that nonprofits have. Um, and some examples of those are annual tasks, you know, such as the upcoming audit. Um, and there's not enough time to get ready or <laughs> what happens a lot of times is it takes you off, you know, all your regular work that you have to do and you end up getting behind. Um, and that just sort of sets you up to be behind, right, for the next year. So, you know, think about outsourcing that audit work. Um, a lot of firms um, like ours, we're, we're um, ex-auditors, many of us, not everyone, but a lot of us, so we know exactly what those auditors are looking for um, and what our audit friends want and need. So uh, that's a great way to leverage outsourced accounting. Another annual task is budgeting. You know, this is something that whether it's an operating budget um, or maybe a capital or campaign budget or even your your programming budgets. Um, this is something where you can outsource the creation of the budget and maybe wow. even take it to a next level, um, include scenario planning, cash forecasting. Um, those are just, you know, a few examples of um, where outsourcing makes sense. Yeah. Um, sure. This is an interesting comment because I have never, ever, ever, ever thought of outsourcing the budgeting. Have you have you seen that, Jarrett? You know, I don't know that I have seen it. I've seen um, an outsourced, you know, finance professional, and I've seen many YPTC at work um, that have taken elements of this and, and budgeting being one of those. But what I really love in this space, Carol, is how the outsourced professional can take perhaps that intermediate expert level task responsibility because nonprofit finances are different, right? Like they're different. Yeah. And, I, and I see this all the time. And again, like I have just an inkling of accounting experience. Um, <laughs> I feel like I've learned it via Google, right? And like <laughs> through forums, but really looking at it from, there are some really expert tasks that need to happen that not your average Joe or Jill, right? Like has that experience. So, and budgeting, right. Julia might right. be absolutely one of them. And if you think about, you know, someone in-house is only doing budgeting once a year, right. where if you bring out that um, outside specialist, they're doing that at multiple clients, you know, so they're bringing the benefit of all those, you know, all that experience with them into looking at your budget and helping with that. Um, yeah, and there's some other examples um, that we see um, certain financial challenges. This one is pretty common is the CFO and the controller are getting ready to retire. Um, and there <laughs> yeah. is a need, we're seeing a lot of that. Um, yeah. And, you know, there's need for that, for that interim support sometimes because we know it takes a long time to find that right person and you, you need to make a really good decision. So sometimes bringing in an outsourced accountant to help uh, first spend time with that outgoing person and really learn um, the business and what they're doing, and then bridge that gap while you do a very thorough search for the next person, um, and then help onboard that new person and really help train them and set them up for success. So that's a great way to, to leverage um, outside support. Carol, let me ask you this, and maybe this is on your myth list. <laughs> I've heard this um, multiple times, right? Is that, oh no, we can't outsource finance. We need the person in the office eight to five, right? Five days a week. We really need them. Um, and as Julia and I, you know, have said before, we need them in the office, but we're also going to put them in the back corner where the lights are off and there's no windows. Right. Yeah. Right? So gonna... Talk to us about yeah. outsourcing and the benefits, whether the person resides on campus or on site versus virtual. 
Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. And well, there are there are many, many benefits, but you know, one thing you want to look for in an outsource account is are they going to work with how you work? So if you are working all remotely, you know, can they work that way? Or if you're going to be in the office or hybrid, can they also come in and do that? Because um, you know, one of the keys to a successful outsource. Uh, situation is really that collaboration and really working together. You don't want your outsourced accountant to be, you know, sitting in the back room necessarily because you want them to understand the business, yeah. right? You want, you know, because that's the way they're really best going to be able to help. But, um, you know, when we talk about some of the benefits, um, we've kind of touched on that expertise and specialization. And what comes along with that is sometimes a fresh perspective. So, you know, look at, you know, someone coming from outside, looking at your processes and procedures um, and maybe your technology, maybe, you know, they can bring in fresh light and, you know, fresh eyes to look at that um, and really help bring you along um, again with the benefit of all the, their experience. We talked about cost savings. One thing about an outsourced accountant is, especially if you don't need full time, is you only pay for what you need. What is it? The the is it Liberty Insurance that has that? <laughs> they only pay for what you need. But that's exactly the same, you know, um, the way it works here. Another big benefit is scalability. So you can add or reduce um, work without that challenge of hiring or having to lay off employees Thanks. because sometimes it's just a temporary need or short-term project. Um, so, you know, that's a great way to, um, to, you know, build extra capacity. Um, also well, let's, let's talk yeah. about this because, you know, you are the fin finance and accounting expert. So I got to drill down on the money side. And yes. I think, and Jared, I don't know if you hear this as well, but I think a lot of people are like, oh no, we can't afford that. It's going to be crazy expensive, you know? And what does that look like to you? You said something really interesting that I hadn't thought of in this context. And again, this, this goes under the umbrella of outsourcing. So whether it's HR or marketing, anything, um, you can scale this according to what you need. But yet when you have somebody, as Jarrett mentioned, in that dark, dank corner in the back, you're like, what are you guys doing over there? You know, you, yes. you sometimes make work for them. And so kind of what does that look like in terms of saving money or being effect, cost effective? Yeah, yeah. Great question. And that is one of, you're right. That is one of the myths um, that we hear. You know, we'll, we'll hear nonprofits say, I can't afford an outsourced accounting firm. Yeah. Um, but, you know, um, most outsourced accounting firms, our firm, you know, we, we're accountants. We are very conscious of the organization's budget. So we're going to work within your budget. <laughs> um, and, and we're going to, you know, we don't want to bust the budget. Um, so I want to bust that myth that um, you can afford it because you, what you want to do is figure out what the greatest need is, right? And then direct those resources to that need. But um, to go to your question, Julia, about, um, you know, does outsourcing save money or increase costs? And um, outsourcing, you know, it can often be more cost effective than maintaining an in-house um, accounting department. Um, you know, reduced labor costs. You can save money. We know it takes a lot of money and effort and time to hire. So you're not hiring. Yeah. Um, the training, you know, training the staff professional development is expensive. So these folks from outsourced accounting are coming in with that training, right? And that knowledge. Um, so those are costs that you're not going to have, not to mention benefits. Um, and sometimes, you know, uh, if you're working um, in person, avoiding those infrastructure costs, like an office space, yeah. even if it is a dark, dank corner <laughs> um, or, um, you know, or equipment, they often are coming with their own equipment, right? So you don't have those costs and all of that maintenance as well. And really um, what you said, Julia, is, is the flexibility, you know, you, it allows you to scale up or down as needed or, or an outsourced accounting firm should, you know, have that be able to be flexible with you um, 
And because, you know, things change, needs change. We yeah. certainly have seen that, right, over the last three yeah. years. So you want to have that flexibility. And that way you can, you can save costs when you don't need that extra help. Yeah. One thing I've witnessed to this uh, space, Carol, truly is, you know, bringing in an outsourced expert in the finance accounting realm, they're, they expedite, right? Like they're really... Yeah. They expedite the task. They're often putting in automations, integrating systems, like really coming in to strengthen what yeah. could be done, right? That maybe the yes. team uh, that is currently there or the individual individuals that might have recently left, right? Like didn't have the knowledge. Um, and so I really see where there's actually cost savings because you're bringing in this person at such an expert level they're bringing also this team of resources, right, to the organization that really strengthen the infrastructure, the tech stack. I mean, there's so much, uh, you know, that goes on here. So I know you brought a lot of myths uh, to today's episode, and I, I agree with you. I think, you know, busting the, can we afford this? It's like, first of all, I want to say you can't afford not to have a conversation about it, right? Like you yes. have to at least invest in that conversation. Um, but let's switch gears now into what does this process look like by way of timeline? So how long does it take the process to really work well once we've said, okay, we're, we're going to do doing it. this. <laughs> yes. Yeah. What does this look like? Yeah. So the timeline for outsourcing to really work well, of course, it can vary widely, right? It depends on the complexity of the nonprofit and the and its accounting. Um, it, it, it largely depends on what the condition of the accounting records are. Mm -hmm. um, I know at our firm, you know, often folks are calling us because um, things are messy, you know, so if it's going to be messy, we want to, you know, sometimes we have to get in there to figure out, well, how messy is this um, and how long is it going to take? And we try to give an estimate up front, but sometimes, you know, this is where communication is really, really important and um, and why you don't want your person in the back is you want to be, you know, understanding what, how are they spending their time? You know, these are your resources. You want to know how are they spending their time and, and really um, understanding if we have to um, refine, you know, our, our timeline and our deliverables, it's going to take us longer, but um, you know, like anything, preparation and planning are, are crucial for a timeline, yeah. right? So setting those clear goals, resetting them, like I said, if necess necessary, and then allowing, nonprofits should allow for some onboarding time. Sometimes, uh, you know, our clients think that we can come in and just wave a magic wand, which mm -hmm. sometimes it seems like we can, um, and we often do, but you know, if they're in a mess, they didn't get into that mess overnight and it's not going to take, um, you know, we're not gonna be able to fix it overnight. So if you are thinking about outsourcing, make sure that you're coming into it with realistic, you know, expectations that it's gonna take a little bit of time. Um, and you want some of that upfront time for your outsourced accountant to under, you know, to onboard, really understand the business so they can be a true partner and a business advisor um, and not not just accounting and finance, but really, you know, the whole the whole nonprofit business as a whole. Yeah. Carol, let me ask you this question as a follow up. Is there like a better time of the year to do this than another? Because what you're saying, it, it kind of involves the whole ecosystem of how we start our years, how we end our years, how we report all of our compliance. Can you guide us a little bit on that? Yeah. I mean, I would say that um, any time is a good time to think about <laughs> this. I mean, um, you know, certainly if you're up against, you know, a grant deadline um, or, you know, all of a sudden you have new fund federal funding, say, and you need help with figuring out the reporting structure and the tracking and the monitoring, um, you know, there's no time like the present. Bring someone in to help with that, right? Um, or if you're looking at a new um, accounting system, you know, it, you know, you might think, well, it's I should wait until after the fiscal year end is over. But really, you know, 
anytime that um, you can bring someone in to start the process, um, if you're thinking about a new accounting system, you probably want to have someone help you with the mapping and the chart of accounts yeah. and, and making sure that you you are you have some sort of liaison between the systems specialist and the finance folks. And often that's another opportunity for um, for a firm like YPTC to help with. Mm-hmm. It makes me think of the quote, right? The best time to plant a tree was 30 years ago. Yes, the exactly. second best time is today. <laughs> yes, that's I exactly. That yes. Yeah, I that, love that quote. That absolutely applies. Um, one of the other myths that we haven't talked about yet is, um, you know, when when organizations are thinking about um, an outsourced um, approach, they often think, well, the outsourced accountant won't work well with my team. And, you know, this is really important part of the process when you're looking and considering different firms is, is how are they going to work with your team? Um, you know, that you want them to be part of your team. And um, I'll share a little bit of um, my background. Before I started at YPTC, I was actually a client. Uh... So I hired YPTC to be my controller um, when I was the CFO of a nonprofit. And um, I, I, yes, I, you know, treated my YPTC person and she, um, she acted like she was just part of my team. So she was the controller. I had others in my finance team and I often, you know, would forget even that she was not, you know, not um, an employee of the nonprofit because she integrated so well. Um, yeah. And that's that is you know. such a great story because, you know, I, I've been an outsourced consultant, Julia, you have been, and I, and I hear you, Carol, like there's certain organizations that say, Hey, you're a part of us. And then, then there's others. I felt it right. Where it's like, you're on a, a need to know basis at, you know, kind of like mm-hmm. push to the side, but really mm-hmm. the more we're involved, uh, the better. One thing that I, I wanted to ask you, how involved should this outsourced finance person be with the board? So with the mm. board and at the meetings, yeah. what did you take on that? Yeah, that's Good a great question. question. Well, um, for us, you know, we always, the most important relationship is with that executive director, right? You know, well, often working, you know, with everyone in finance and maybe even in development and we're talking to program people, but really our main contact is that executive director. But the relationship with the board is important. You know, the board has a fiduciary duty to make sure that, you know, they understand that the accounting is and finance team um, are in, you know, are in good hands. So we, you know, it's important for them to, uh, to talk with the accountants at least once a year, um, at the very at the very least, but probably even more often than that. You know, being able to ask questions, being able to you know to really understand um, the finances and the internal controls. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Carol, I'm I'm curious. This is kind of a crystal ball moment, but we mentioned we name dropped Gerilyn Dressler earlier, right? <laughs> and we were talking about how there's really a shortage of finance professionals perhaps because many of them truly are retiring. You know, we've seen this um, earlier in the pandemic. So many professionals, you know, stayed past what they wanted to stay by way of their own kind of retirement timeline. But I'm curious what your crystal ball is showing as we move forward. We're wrapping up this year, moving into 2024. What are you predicting, right? This is this is just yours. You're speaking on your behalf, but mm-hmm. what are you predicting by way of outsourced, you know, financial experts? Is that something, a trend we're going to see grow? I mean, what are you seeing in this space overall? Yeah. Um, yeah. I think we are going to see a trend and, and, you know, we've been seeing that over the last several years. And I think it's going to continue um, because, um, you know, because of that flexibility and, and, and that scalability, um, you know, on the nonprofit side, um, they're, you know, 
all nonprofits are really in the last couple of years, they've had to take a really hard look at their their budgets and their resources and really being able to, you know, to focus on the things that matter and and, and outsourcing, you know, helps make sense of that. And I think in terms of on the um, on the accountant side, I think the accounting profession is sort of getting the message, and is you know is is looking at changing and being more flexible, being you know more amenable to work life balance, and I think that's all positive. Yeah, I need you to. know I've got to believe that organizations that outsource and it and with their accounting and finance, that might be the first time they've done it. And I've got to believe that if it's a good environment, they're going to outsource some other things, you know, all yes. the way from HR to marketing, IT, part, yeah, IT yes. part of programming, compliance. I mean, I can just see this really becoming a way of doing business where yeah. before we didn't talk about it, right? Yeah, exactly, Julia. We we see that, you know, often, um, you know, you're right, the accounting will be the first thing um, that they will outsource uh, because of that specialization. And then often it's it's HR, it's IT, yeah, in those things, uh, because they can see that, that it works. Right. Um, and, you know, a couple of those other myths that we, we haven't hit on yet, uh, one of them is... Um, so often nonprofits will say, well, we don't have time to train someone, um, you know, um, meaning when you even when you bring an outsourced accountant, they recognize that, that there, you know, there is that onboarding process. Sure. Um, and that's where, again, when you're when you're vetting, looking at outsourced firms, you know, that's something to to make sure that you're you're understanding, you know, um, that usually they can get up to speed very quickly because they've been doing this. Um, you know, at so many different clients. And, you know, we like to say you're not you're not just hiring uh, one person, you're hiring the whole firm, right? So you're getting the benefit of all of that knowledge. And even if your uh, part-time controller maybe doesn't have that specific experience, you've got a firm that has, you know, has that knowledge that can that can help um, uh, build that bring it along. Capacity. You know, um, we've been thrilled to have you come in and share with us. Um, Carol Melvin, Regional Director of Your Part-Time Controller. Um, what an interesting, I, I, Jared, I got to believe this is like cutting edge in that there are going to be a lot of other people that watch this episode or listen and say, yeah, I can do that in other parts of my business because yeah. it's such a, it's such an, um, an awesome way to grow or respond to the needs of your business without, you know, stressing out about where are we going to put them? How do we get them on our technology? How do we find, you know, the parking space? I mean, you know, all those things that we think about when we grow our, our nonprofit. Yeah. Well, even things, you know, that Carol mentioned as we wrap up things like the, you know, the overhead, right? So like, uh, the health insurance, the yeah. the days off, the vacation, the equipment, yeah. right? Like there's a lot that goes into this. So clearly Carol has helped us to bust mm -hmm. a lot of myths and also see the benefits of outsourcing and why it makes sense for your nonprofit. If you're interested in chatting with Carol or anyone from the YPTC team, check them out. Their website is YPTC stands for your part-time controller.com. Um, also, if you joined us in our green room chatter, you heard me say that I have been tempted to join these career meetups. So <laughs> YPTC is hiring. Uh, they did not ask me to share that, but I'm always <laughs> tempted to join those meetups because the team is fantastic um, across the nation, serving exclusively nonprofits, um, which again, like really sets you apart because you can hire a bookkeeper, you can hire an accountant, but to hire a nonprofit expert right in that space, that's what really sets you apart. So Carol Melvin, you have been fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're always lucky because once a month we get a representative to join Julia and I here on the show from YPTC. So thank you for being part of that today. And again, as we wrap up, we want to say 
Thank you. We're still on the gratitude train and saying uh, <laughs> our gratitudes. So thank you to Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Fundraising Academy at National University, Nonprofit Thought Leader, your part-time controller, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Nerd, as well as Nonprofit Tech Talks. So just as you heard from Carol, you will hear from each representative or a representative, I should say, from each of these companies every single month. So thank you for joining us today. And as we sign off today's episode, as we've signed off all episodes, well, first of all, we want to remind you to join us tomorrow because you know, this is a daily broadcast. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, of course. But also we want to remind you to stay well so you can do well. Thank you, Carol. Thank you so much.